Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today folks, an amp that you might have seen on the channel once or twice before, but really not much. And this is actually going to be the last video you ever see it in. I'll explain why at the end. But behind me here is an Ashdown Fallen Angel 180 half stack. And that is exactly what it sounds like. 180 watts of all tube head. It's six EL34s. It is the loudest thing in the world. And it's not really my sort of amp, so it's largely been a piece of furniture for the last 10 years that I've owned it. It has two channels on it. The first channel is the clean channel, but you can make it crunch up. And that's more kind of typical British EL34 amp. Quite mid-rangey, quite barky. I do like channel one on it. Channel two is the kind of heavy gain channel, much more kind of scoopy in the mid-range, a bit buzzy. I'm less fond of channel two, but channel one is really nice. Now, I've owned this amp, as I said, for about 10 years, and I bought this from my university that I went to because they had uh, an endorsement, isn't the right word, sponsorship, I suppose, from a few different amp companies to provide backline for their rehearsal rooms and recording studios. So it was mostly Blackstar, so I played a lot of like Artisan 30s back in the day, and they were sponsored by Marshall as well, I think. I used a JCM 2000 a lot on my first album. But for their bass amps, they were sponsored by Ashdown. And as part of that deal, they got a couple of these Fallen Angel 180 half stacks and nobody ever used them because the music college I went to, it was much more people with like strats and tellies wanting to play Fender Twins and the occasional AC30. High gain scoopy metal amps weren't their bag at all. But when I was recording my first album at university, I used this amp, or the other half stack, one of the two, for a few lead parts on that album. And in the context of what I was doing back in 2012, it really worked well. I'll play a little clip now of a track I used this amp for the solo on, and you'll hear it, it really kind of sits in the mix really nicely for that heavy gain thing. <laughs> So it records really nicely in that context, but I was literally the only person who had ever plugged into this amp pretty much. And just as I was leaving university, I mentioned to one of the tutors that it was sounding really nice sitting in a track. And they said, well, you're the only one that uses it. Do you want to buy it? And it was a really reasonable price. It was kind of mates rates, I suppose. So it's, you know, very overkill for anything I would ever use it for. But I jumped at it, so I've owned it for 10 years, but it has largely kind of sat there unused. To be honest, I've used it as a bass amp on recordings more than anything else. Just plugging the bass guitar straight into the effects loop return to bypass the front end. So it's pretty quiet compared to what it would be if you were plugging in the front, but with 180 watts of power, you just turn it up and it's still plenty loud enough to record with. And I typically would record that with a bass guitar going through it and blend that with a DI. It's pretty common to blend a DI with a bass sort of amp mic sound. So that's what I've used it for most over the years. But on some recordings for kind of heavier guitar parts, it has come in useful. It's an amp designed for heavy gain metal players, especially seven string players. It's a four by 12 closed back cab, so it has a huge low end on it. And yeah, it, it's not my sort of amp really. Now I'll explain at the end of the video where I'm taking this amp tomorrow, but uh, essentially I'm part exchanging it for another amp. So today's my last opportunity to kind of do a bit of a demo of this amp, I suppose, and show you what it sounds like. So I'm not going to play too much today. I'm not going to use any pedals. I'm just going to plug straight in the front end of the end of the amp. And I'll show you a couple of clips of using the clean channel with a couple of different guitars and then switch over to the heavy gain channel. It has a boost built into it as well. So I'll kick that on to show you how gainy it can get. But it really is a monster of an amp for the right player. I'm not the right player for this amp, but it can sound absolutely huge. I'm not going to crank the master today because I will literally knock the wall down in this room but I just wanted to show you what it sounds like before I get a shot of it. So without further ado guys here we go. <laughs>
Thank you.
we are, folks. Now, please do comment underneath. Let me know what you thought of those tones. They're not the usual tones you would hear on this channel, but there's some very fun ones in there for sure. And this amp really makes you want to do that sort of chuggy, riffy metal stuff, which I can't play at all. So apologies for my sloppy playing there. Now, as I said at the start of the video, I'm part exchanging this amp tomorrow. And one of the reasons for shooting this video today was also to check it's in full working order so I can get rid of it with a clear conscience because I don't want to screw anybody over. But it's all working so I can get rid of it tomorrow. So I'll show you what the new head is as and when I've done the deal. But today was the last chance I had to play this amp and actually do a demo. There aren't many demos of these sorts of amps on YouTube. So I wanted to get it done before I uh, say goodbye to it in the morning. So thank you ever so much for watching folks. I hope this video was interesting and useful. Please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it, but it does make a huge difference when you subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.